Paul Greedy has that four, and I think FNG, like you're saying, this addition gives him a lot more room to play with uh, from that support role. But here we are, draft ready, game one in this best of three between Viking and Alliance. And we should see, you know, a, a bit of a different uh, kind of drafting stage to what we did earlier on in that CIS heavy series. Hopefully we'll see a bit of Ember Spirit, Lacoste. I don't think we're going to see the hero. <laughs> The Just completely gone every single game. Yeah. Am goes Lycan, DP gone. If you have the first pick, you might leave it in the pool and forcing enemy, you know, to waste, or you, you can call it a waste, but I don't think it's a waste of ban on Ember Spirit. He's a natural spirit vessel carrier, comes online fast, can fight all the time, create space for the team. And Alliance recently, loving that Nature's Prophet might be a, a hero to target out. Death Prophet, of course, something that Alliance use exceptionally well uh, across a number of roles, as there is the, the Nature's Prophet gone, along with Ember Spirit, like you were saying, just not going to be seeing that hero. Viking, they'll have to open up with like Keeper of the Light Bristleback. That's their combo to go to in the opener. They love Phoenix as well. That hero is still in the pool. Anything else like that Grimstroke sticks DK. out? Grimstroke, yep. Definitely uh, a number of ways they can go. Alliance with Profit gone. They're probably looking you know, still towards your your Ogres, your Chens. Heroes that FNG loves to pick up. A Bane, for example, could be what they start with. It's all gone. Removing one of S4's heroes. There's also the fact, you know... S4's hero pool is pretty vast. You know, you can play anything from the DK to the Centaur, have the Shadow Demon Centaur with them. Uh, Oracle still in the pool as well. Could be a good first pickup for either of these sides. Oh, we did see yesterday Celery's Enchantress was a very strong hero, uh, giving them a lot of kind of map maneuverability. That's also a hero that FNG really loves to play. So it could be. Contested, Batrider gone. A lot of these good position 5 heroes still in the pool. You have Grimstroke, you have Keeper of the Light, Enchantress, Chen. You can't ban, ban out all of them. Too many heroes. Beastmaster gone. So, first pick. What's FNG going to take himself? S4, give me my position 5 now. And they could theoretically go with Grimstroke themselves and still have that open between the 4 or the 5. I don't think you want to open up with Grimstroke when there's possibility of Enchantress. You just mm -hmm. remove completely the Grimstroke laning stage, dispelling the Ink Swell. So he literally has one spell in the lane. Phoenix. Okay, what happened Left to Grandma? Up. We had that discussion yesterday. Pango, like, snap fire. You just kill kill the Phoenix Egg so quickly. People stop Pango playing Rubik. it. I really don't know what happened to Grandma. He received no, some maybe. nerves. She received some nerves, but that that's it. I don't think the hero... I wouldn't rate it as high as some other position fives. But still, I would rate it very high. So what do you want to go along with uh, the Phoenix here? There's still Mars do we if still... you want to go for, for that combo. I want to go for their support duo early okay. on. So that should be Hansken and uh, FNG's heroes. So Bane is great against Banglier during the Rolling Thunder. <laughs> Not that great against Rubik. If you use Fiend's Grip, it could easily be stolen by Rubik. And he's got Telekinesis to cancel it, you know, in, in two different ways, either target the Bane or drag someone back into him. And Pango Rubik has been a very popular hero opener, you know, for, for a number of teams. Gives you a great position four with, with Rubik. Uh, Pango very likely does get put into the three because of that, but... The lane together, you've got long range, reach, chase potential, and just so much damage between Fadebolt and Swashbuckle. You can secure creeps, uh, range creeps. You can really deal very well with that support hero. Like Pango loves having the 1v1 against the carry, and Rubik loves having like a 1v1 on the side between the other support. 
It often feels like you kind of want to try lane into these two heroes just to try and limit their laning stage. Wow. This is a new hero. Pause 5 Venge? I, I don't know. They might be looking for Luna. Group up with Venge and Luna. Venge cancels Bane's grip as well. These shores are not dealing well with Phoenix Egg. And they seem rather yeah, squishy. Certain. Also, like, single target, I would say. I mean, Rubik steals something, but they look very... very easy to kill. Yeah, if the other one's getting jumped on, could get picked off, quite simply. Dragonite response from Alliance doesn't really mind too much about minus armor or physical damage. Also, Alliance has a Flexible. very good ways of protecting the egg. Dragonite stun, Bane, ulti, or sleep. So it's a flexible pick. He can go to multiple lanes, one, two, three, for Dragonite. So you don't, you still don't know where he's going to go. You don't know the matchups. As for Viking, you know that this, like, Rubik is going to be four. Pangolier looks like position three at the moment, and Venge five. Even though you can still play Venge as a like carry, you know, I don't know. It doesn't <laughs> feel that good. Yeah, I think I think if you have like a Morphling as your mid or something, then Venge carry doesn't feel that bad because she's more of the kind of support carry, you know, the the semi carry in that regard. I, I do like the Dragonite with you know Phoenix and these team fight ultis though. Put Dragonite up at the front, hit an objective, take a tier one or something. And if the opponents want to try and defend that tower, you've got Supernova, you've got Grip to counter initiate there and protect that. You know, D you're saying they've got ways of protecting Egg, but they've got ways of protecting DK with raw team fight as well. Gives them some tower damage that they were severely lacking on Alliance's side. So you're still thinking about the Luna here. The Viking have that reasonably early group up and push. Oh, it's also a life stealer into Bane. He's a great ag hitter with the attack speed, but also Bane. Like he has two targets, you need to choose whether you go for Pangolier with the ulti or you go for life stealer. And I guess, like you've been saying, they're not too worried about the fiend's grip with the amount of ways to cancel it they've got. Like they can swap someone out, they can telekinesis, steal it away. Bane's going to have a pretty rough time just getting a Fiend's Grip off regardless. Hmm. It's, Where's the Nico I, baby I was Slark? thinking whether it's a Slark or Phantom Lancer game. I was just weighing my options. You know, it's a he can get out of anything, in and out. That's how Slark plays, and it's a very good Slark game. They don't have an answer for it right now. And they still have the open flexibility of the DK, right? Could be both S4 or Limp. Hey, you're, like, you're picking Lifestealer into a Dragonite as well, right? So you've got DK and Slark who don't mind playing against Lifestealer too much. But he can play pretty fast. Are you expecting like Armlet Desolator here, I assume? Yeah, you want to come online as fast as possible here. Long gone are the days of the Radiance Lifestealer. And then you <laughs> get Heaven, yeah. And then you get Heaven's Halberd, which is great against both Dragonite and most importantly Slark. Can't dispel that. Necro ban. <laughs> I mean it's a good ban. They have no no real magical burst. It would be such a free necro game. They still have one more pick, of course. And what a Viking looking for. It's, it's, it's got to be three Pango, four Rubik, five Venge, one Life Stealer. So it's their. their They're Rune looking for hero, a mid. Right? It's like Queen of Pain. <laughs> or Razor. How about a Razor this game? Razor sounds better than Co op for sure. But then, once again, you have no. You, you can't. Play against Slark, maybe Leshrac. I would prefer to have Leshrac. Slark really hates to play into Lesh. AoE damage during the ulti. And they have nice ways of setting things up for Leshrac. It also allows them to take towers 
opens up the Roche, having the SO carrier with Lesh always feels great. I think they've got like, quite a few options. Templar Assassin doesn't seem amazing here against like Dark Pact, Fiery Spirits. Storm Spirits, not too bad though. The Dragon Tail, really the only guaranteed stun that's uh, that's up there. But I'm wondering about like a Monkey King, for example. Uh, you know, into DK Slark, gives you another stun to cancel out Bane's Fiend's Grip or like long range reach uh, to play with Rubik, Venge, jumping on the trees, hunting down the Phoenix and match up against DK or Slark, pretty good as well. I feel like Vikings lineup is not tall enough. Like the only one who's tall is Rubik. Did, did you ever They're think of short. that? Like how they look <laughs> as a team on these pictures? Maybe they don't, you know, look that strong, so you don't feel like it's a strong lineup. Alliance really taking their time with this last. Do so you think they should pick Tide Hunter or something? Pick something big, a baton with that huge sword in the last <laughs> one that we saw. Pick some long heroes. Yeah, Alliance going all the way down. There's there's the Lash Rack you called for. Does finally get removed. Probably Nico Baby saying, hey guys, I really don't want to play against the Lash this game. And that magic damage could deal with the Dragon Knight as well. So Alliance now theoretically could still move this Dragon Knight between two and three. Probably comes down to what Limp wants to play. And they're picking blindly, so you can pick a hero that can be played at both mid and the off lane. I don't think Life Dragonite minds playing against Life Stealer in the lane. And that's, 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 that's still a hero. hero that can go yeah. both ways, right? It's also a hero that creates a lot of space for Slark until he comes online. So the question is, what do you and pick here? Like you can go like a Shadow Fiend if it's good at both against Dragonite and Void Spirit. If it's a but it also buck removes game, the option of like Razor, right? We have nine out of ten heroes. So Gary, you can't pick another hero after. What do, what do you mean? No, like I mean, Void like Spirit if, like against if the Razor? To razor now, you, you put Void Spirit against the Razor and just dissimulate away. True. I still feel like it's just okay Shadowfin game. Slark also needs to be careful about SF Ulti and the Razors. Puck is ah, so so, but uh, well, there you the go one for Monkey you called. King. There it is. Monkey <laughs> life stealer, your two cores. It's a monkey against three melee heroes, so it should be okay monkey game. But I'm I'm a bit afraid that there's single target focus. I'm liking Alliance's lineup more, I gotta say. Still feel like it's a Slark game that can he can take over the game easily after like 20-25 minutes. Even if he gets stunned, I know Slark likes to buy all the status resistance items, especially Nico Baby, the Fusel Blade drums, the Fusel Blade into SNY Satanic. And if he decides to go for that kind of a build, like you don't die. That they can just burst you. Yeah, he just pounce away. And Viking, you know, before Shad gets that Desolator up, their, their building damage is pretty lacking, right? Alliance have that Dragonite to try and shove objectives, and like we are saying, the team fight behind him with Limp. Very good hero to dive under towers and look for those pickoffs. But I think Viking have some pretty good ways of getting in on top of the backline. Uh, but when you're, you know, when you're relying on your heroes to continually like smoke gank and backstab and try and find FNG or Hanskin on these two support heroes, you kind of leave the fight open to the elusive Limp and Nico Baby, Voice Spirit and Slark that can kind of dance in and out of battle. And they don't have a great way of just dealing with DK. Like you need like three or four heroes just to kill Dragon Knight on his own. You could quite easily delay fights. You also don't have reliable catch for Void Spirit. Rubik's left. Th that's pretty much it. Monkey's boundless. The limp Void Spirit. Here we go. Game one in this best of three. Viking taking on Alliance. 
As we get ourselves into the lane, Aramis heading out towards top on the Rubik with Toby Pango. Boom on the Monkey King and Cellar Revenge while Shad all alone down bottom on the Lifestealer. Aramis starting with uh, Sage's Mask. Getting that mana regen going. So it's the best item here. you can get. Like four position four, sometimes you're in position fives. If you want to spell, if you want to use multiple spells in the laning stage, one mana region per second, that, that's just insanely good. You can also upgrade it to Sage Mask, but you can also leave it. Upgrade Sage Mask to Sage Mask. Sounds good. Yeah, so, up to, uh, upgrade Sage's Mask to Sobi Mask. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Swashbuckle, Toby gets that Orb of Venom onto FNG, the Boundless Strike level 1 from Boom, but they still won't get a kill. Uh, this could cost him the lane, like he would get much more out of the lane. They try to get a first blood, I've seen this before, like I believe it was Monkey King against the Dragonite and then he didn't have, have it until level 2. Yeah, having no Jingu feels real bad, it, like it always reminds me of... You know, old Enigma games where you buy, uh, where you level Malefice instead of Demonic Conversion, and you're like, well, we nearly got this kill, but now my entire laning stage until level 2 is ruined. So top lane, Rubik, Pango up against the Slark Bane. Everyone just toying with these outposts right now. Shad trying to reclaim his down south. Hanskin doing a good job zoning him back. We'll be laning with S4 on that Dragonite. So Phoenix, DK. Seems like a real rough one here for Venge Lifestealer to lane against. Dragonite doesn't care about Venge or Lifestealer. Like, exactly. Lifestealer usually beats the melee heroes. But Dragonite also, with uh, Dragon Blood, doesn't care too much. You know, he's gonna have enough of the sustain in the lane. And Celery, level 1 stun. Once Phoenix has Fire Spirits, you, you can't trade. Well, Void Spirit, 3-0 in that mid lane for Limp. A big wave coming in for Boom, but again, this lack of Jingu, definitely a problem for the monkey. What's Hanskin doing? Blocking up camps? Yeah, blocking the poor camp. Celery will get a lot of damage here. Magic Missile stun into a couple of hits. Force that Phoenix away. And top lane, Nico Baby dragging the wave around. FNG is going to aggro the range creep, unfortunately. What's he up to? <laughs> A little range creep following the bane. So lane equilibrium reset. Well, due to the fact that Toby did drag that dire wave back behind his tier one. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Man, 8-2 for limp in that mid spot. Boom has got to be so, so heavily regretting taking bound to strike level one. I believe he said to himself, Man, I'm never doing this again. Like, even if it means that we're not getting first blood, I'm, I'm not gonna scale it. Aramis Courier sniped down by FNG. He's doing such a good job here, zoning the Rubik away. Still has that brain sap as well. Bane, excellent at trading hits. Oh, he's gonna get another Courier. FNG with two Courier snipes. 37 gold each, times five. That's 180 gold times 2, 360, easy 360, no scope for the team. <laughs> Beautiful maths. And there's first blood though. First Aramis blood. might be trading. What is Back. This? No, Nico baby doesn't get it. FNG overstepping. Don't be angry. And that's the lift back with the fade bolt. Toby doing a great job as well, getting those hits in. Mid lane to simulate from Limp to get away from the Boom Monkey King, but with a Boundless Strike he gets that final Jingu stack up. And catching up in the CS now as well as that lane does start to swing back into the Monkey King's favor, even with the, uh, the problem he had earlier on. Oh, bottom. Shad and Celery playing into S4, but a quick breathe fire and level 2 Dragon Blood, like you were saying, Dragonite doesn't really care about your harassment here. He's soaking up all that damage while Hanskin sits full HP and dragging waves across into the creep camp. 11 CS on Lifestealer, 14 on Dragonite. What is he bringing? Gloves of Haste? Yeah, you want to bring Gloves of Haste to match Lifestealer's attack speed? If you think oh, I'm gonna get more damage by buying another bracer, it's not value. Like 
the value you get from Gloves of Haste is much better, and then you just upgraded the uh, Power Treads. Now oh, Limp is dodging away from these Jingu stacks, but Boom is very happy just to use Boundless Strike to get that fourth stack as top lane. Nightmare transferred off of Toby. Onto the Rubik, though, and RMS... Oh, okay, Nico Baby, unfortunate for you. Aramis still had the telekinesis anyway. Very close fort lane in that top spot. Pango getting a decent amount of farm there. Yeah, you said oh, Rubik but... is doing well. He wants to be able to use Fade Bolt on multiple targets, but he's also fine with just, you know, oh. trading one hit against the Bane. Bane also does the same thing. They were so close to killing him. 30 HP, Rubik. Gets away from Nico Baby and FNG, and now the Bane is out of HP, out of mana. Can't really offer too much. While well, the Radiant tangoing and salving back to full. Monkey King now overtaking Limp's Void Spirit. This is Does have an Arcane Moon bottled up, though, on Limp. Level 3 Resonant Pulse. What do, you, what do you reckon? Is this an Aghanim's game for the old Void Spirit? Celery going in for the bounty runes, but he's going to get trapped in between Hanskin and S4. Void Spirit is one of the heroes who can like, rush Aghanim's Scepter straight away, and then there's nothing wrong about it. Like having two charges, two seconds silence times two. Also, you get more physical damage reduction. What are you laughing Celery about? Celery with his... Celery's illusion just killed off S4's courier, like, as it was about to expire, behind the that tier 1 bottom lane. Very well done. And now rotation in from the Venge mid. Limp has Dissimilate. And there's no Boundless Strike to set up, so, I don't know, Primal Spring into Venge stun? But it's going to be difficult to actually bring the Void Spirit down, unless he takes a bunch of tower hits. Another courier? No, not quite. Celery doesn't get enough damage. Down to about 3 HP on that little robot. I think Celery rotated because he felt there's a rotation coming out from Alliance, not because he wanted to kill Void Spirit. He's way too elusive to kill him. Two charges of Astral Step, point in the Simulate. You, you just don't have enough to lock him down. Well, Limp gets the Illusion Rune top, gets a ward down, spots the bounty, but he's trying to backstab Aramis and he jumps immediately on him with that. Little Remnant will catch him up. Avoid, avoid Very quick the kill, and they might be able to get the Pango as well. If FNG can find Toby, just use Swashbuckle. Toby, it's on cooldown. You're right. So Nico Baby pounces him up, and in comes Limp, looking for the double Shadow Dance. Not ready yet for Nico Baby. Doesn't really need it. Just gets the final touch, and the first stack of permanent Angie is there. This is it. This is what you need. Like, give me that one. You know what triggers me the most in Dota when I'm playing like a carry or off lane? I don't play mid is I missed the first CS, and especially if it was the free one. Like, th th this is probably the most triggering part for me. Uh, it's like CS. you're not agreeing. Yep, yeah. missing the first CS, the free, first free CS. Just tilts you out of the game. Phoenix can move around the map. Now the Dragonite is level five. Three levels of Dragon Blood will hit level six, and then he puts pressure on the life stealer they don't have the catapult but you know he can also deal some tower damage easily doesn't care too much about vengeful spirit they need an extra hero to actually bring down dragonite monkey king now jungling giving rubik that mid lane for a bit of experience it does mean boom is off the map now so the the fear that monkey king's rotating into your lane is definitely a threat that alliance have to consider but the threat of Limp's rotation is something that Viking didn't see coming. Toby, swashbuckle in four seconds. They look like they've got enough damage to bring him down. And with that pounce, they most certainly will. Your cause. Limp moving twice into the top lane and getting a number of kills now. Really setting up Nico Baby for a wonderful game. He pushes the lane on mid. And they have self-sustainable offlaner who can survive alone they need to bring numbers you can see monkey king rotating with the invis s4 knows something is up here reads the map so well beautiful limp on a killing spree now three nil yeah. how's about comes in for a bit of experience they, they they know boom has just grabbed a rune i think they're pinging out where he was 
Limp doesn't need to get that much farm because Dragonite is already having, you know, good time on the bottom. And he scales as a hero, so he can just rotate from the top lane to the bottom lane. Both heroes are very hard to kill. Like, you, you can't kill Slark right now. Rubik TPing top to try and save Toby. Swashbuckle down, and Nika Baby's in with the help of Limp, but they're forcing rotations. Three heroes top from Viking. As Limp now can theoretically, you know, TP down bottom lane or something. Or back to mid if he wants to, but sticks around. FNG gonna go back and pull back the wave. A Radiant Observer Ward does spot out Limp's rotations now. A lot of focus though, like you're saying, these top Observer Wards from the, from the Alliance side, giving a lot of vision for Limp's rotations. Pangolier needs to be careful about using his swashbuckles, like offensively. Mid Limp lane. just diving in. Looks like he's going to blow up Aramis. No, he jumps back. The Boundless Strike doesn't catch Phoenix, and Aramis ticking down to the Fiery Spirits and that dive from Hanskin. So S4 pops the Dragon Form to take the objective. Hit that Tier 1, force Viking into this mid lane to try and defend. And all the while, Nico Baby's taking down some massive stacks back in the jungle, accelerating so quickly towards the Diffusal Blade. Yeah, and they forced rotation from Lifestealer and Monkey King's in the mid lane as well, while Outposts both going to the Radiant. Amazing what you found. Wow. Alliance it's missing still a decent trade for Alliance. Their supports are having okay time. You said FNG. He made a lot of stacks for Slark. He's clearing those while he's getting the XP on the top lane. So far, Alliance movement around the map was pretty much perfect. Monkey King farming jungle. Pangolier dying top. Limp with a double damage rune. Well, Slaying that Pango, who now, you know, 0-3-1 and one is having a really rough time. Toby not having a game at all. Radiant with a DD on Limp lasting another, you know, 10 seconds or so, this Catapult Wave arriving. Some really good damage onto the objective. Forcing Aramis to come and defend, and also Monkey King smoked up with Avenge. They want to jump onto Limp, Boundless Strike has started off. Telekinesis simple the chain stuns, they've got the remnant. stolen Remnant, and Limp not able to get the Dissimulate off. And try not to die. Very well executed by Viking. I'm a bit worried about Vikings lineup. We saw that yesterday when Flight and Moon was playing the second game. It's hard for them to start a fight. Like you have Venge position five. Who doesn't want to just like go in? You have the tools, but they're not the best ones. Man, they're hunting Toby relentlessly. S4 and Nico Baby coming down. Okay, Viking want to force a fight around this tier one. Nico Baby's under the tower in the trees. Celery's gonna stun him up. Dark Pact coming out now, and he's got the Shadow Dance to play around with as well as he pounces out. But Limp jumps in. A little bit of a missed uh, timing or lack of communication, but Alliance, they do evade the Wukong's command. Forcing four heroes to defend the tier one bottom while Slark just TP's top will get free farm there. Good pressure from FNG mid, looks for the objective in the mid lane. That tier one dealing with a catapult, not very well. For hero rotation, for what? S4 still continues to farm, same goes for Slark. He's about to finish the Fusal Blade in the next minute. Well, they've gripped up the Rubik. Invis Rune does get grabbed by Aramis, but limp so quickly across the map. Monkey King gets the denial on the tower, though. Radiant At least they get something. And it should yeah, be a free tower on top. Nico Baby saw them rotating to the bottom lane. Two TPs, which means that they're not going to have it. And even if Rubik Radiant's TPs, like, Slark top. might just solo kill you. So that's a freebie Radiant tower. This tower rarely falls for Radiant this early on. Yeah, they're dragging them to one side of the map and then moving straight back. So Radiant's exploit the opening. Creating holes in the Viking map movement for sure. Celery and Boom are maybe aiming to get Limp, who is rushing for the Aghanim Scepter, but as soon as, yes, Nico Baby Slark is straight up into the stacks that were made for Viking on this other side. And they can start playing very easily mid and top if they want to. With both those tier ones down, carving a nice better map for them. They even planted mango tree to have vision. Slark finishes 
his defusal blade 13 minutes in, straight into death, just magic wand, phase boots. There isn't a hero Very that can, quick. you know, stand and man fight against the Slark at the moment. And I talked about status resistance build, how Nico Baby loves to, to build it. They have some stuns this game and you're just gonna lower the cool, you know, the cooldown of those stuns duration, not cooldown. But uh, back to the bottom lane. Yeah, in comes DK yet again. Force the life stealer away. Viking, they are going to react once more with multiple TPs. Try and deal with S4, but that's Sunray healing him up beautifully as the Rolling Thunder and Wukong's Command, all these ulties used to kill off the Dragonite, but the tower still falls. And Alliance, they're thinking about bailing away, but they've brought numbers here. They can still fight if they're able to catch any stragglers. Viking need to retreat as quickly as possible because Limp is hunting and Nico Baby is ready to battle. Rubik TPing to tier 2, Hanskin is cutting them off at the pass, and Nico Baby's going to find two in the back lines here, aiming for Toby, switching to Shan, he's disarmed up, he's going to have to pop the shadow down as quickly as he can, 9-1 charges ready, but in comes Lent, quickly, Astral step away, but Toby jumps in with a swashbuckle, and they've got the Void Spirit, the Dissimulate might buy him a little bit of time, but they've got the Fade Vault from the Rubik. Well played by Viking, baiting them in. To that tree line, I think Alliance were expecting them to have TP'd out maybe one or two heroes. And Boom continues to give chase onto that Phoenix who tried to sunway to the high ground. But very quick kills, snappy and decisive from Viking as they gather some bounty runes as a little bonus after a great team fight. Definitely didn't expect Viking to take this good of a fight. I mean, if they use Wukong's command, Alliance is not just going to run inside of it. Also, I want to see Phoenix using ulti. I don't believe we've seen one Supernova so far. No, I don't believe we have. Oh, nice I play do... from Aramis. Catches Jump away. Slark mid-air, stops his pounce, and then steals it. Pounces away from any danger. You Very talked about nice. Aghanim Scepter on Void Spirit. He is rushing it. It's also one way to... You know, control heroes like a life stealer, Pangolier, just to silence before he can get the rolling thunder off. Yeah, all that rage. Or even like Monkey King, you know, jumping onto trees or using that mischief. There was kind of an interesting move where Alliance seemed like they were going to fight with Limp in that tree line, you know, behind where the tier one used to be. But Hanskin went and placed that deep observer ward close to the tier two and didn't get into the fight fast enough. Spirit Vessel nearly done for the Phoenix, though. Very quick. And Nico Baby, of course, still hasn't died yet. So far having a very good game. But Lifestealer Desolator is coming in, and this timing for Shad is going to hit like an absolute truck. Armlet Deso, he's got the Pangolier and the Monkey King to kind of infest and play with as that bomb of Lifestealer pops right in front of your face. Deep Vision placed Ruby. by FNG. Behind the Jumped tower. Up. TPs, they come fast, but the Rubik gets killed off much quicker than expected. Nightmare onto the Monkey King. FNG thinking about the grip. Diffuser Blade to slow down the Monkey. In comes the Pango with the Rolling Thunder. And they've gone a lot of damage in onto the Sneaker Baby Slark. But the Sunray gives him the time to pop the Shadow Dance. Toby bouncing around in this fight. Now the Wukong's from Boom. Focusing onto S4. Gets the Jingu stacks up. But the Fiery Spirits, the attack speed slow. He doesn't get the job done. They focus the Supernova. And they do bring down Hanskin. But at what cost? As Nico Baby has free reign of this fight now. Healed up by that Sunray. And turns the battle. Look for the Toby kill. Nico Baby gets the grab. Five stacks are anti up now. But Aramis. Returning to the battle and dragging back this Bane into the waiting arms of Shad, the Life Stealer is strong. A quick nightmare drag back, but FN wait, FNG TP? No, not gonna work for him. Very good positioning from FNG. He was hiding underneath the dragons, catches Pangolier, but Pangolier knows where he was, and then Venge just swaps Bane out. Also, not the best Supernova. Like, he used it in front of them. If he dived, a bit back and then used it they would need to move but this time he used it right right in front of their faces and they just killed it it's also level one supernova just seven seven attacks i mean five attacks to destroy it yeah they got rid of it real quick now they can wait for the next set of items to take another fight that spirit vessel now they have a charge on it Van Void Race Spirit. on DK. Void Spirit about to finish. Aghanim, Scepter, and Slark will have S and Y for the next fight. 
A bit of a waiting game then for, for Alliance. Top tier one getting eyed up by Viking. Bringing numbers top. Hanskin has already retreated. As Alliance might just close in on Shad here. Limp with a quick dissimilate, but Astral steps away. They're carving a bit of space for the Slark. Nico Baby shoves out that bot wave. Wants the Sand and Yasha that you've been mentioning. Radiance bottom tower is under and good pressure onto the tier two. In fact, Viking don't go for the objective top. They kind of think about it, consider going there, but now they've caught a glimpse of a couple of Alliance heroes. They'll set up with Aramis Nightmare. Stolen out from Bane onto Limp and Celery. Chain stun him up. Great pick off onto Limp and the telekinesis onto FNG means Boom gets a double kill. The expected move there, Alliance were for sure thinking, hey, they're going to take top tier one. We'll go bottom lane, we'll guard this jungle area, but Viking, the mind games. What did Bane try to do? Sleep the sleeping target and then, and then wake it up? And now they move bottom lane for S4, who's stuck around far too long. Dragonite obliterated. And they will not catch the Slark. Nico Baby straight up the top lane. Oh, this is just a freebie. Like, Dragonite should not die there. And maybe he felt safe because he has the vision behind and in front of the tower. And also they had the outpost. False sense of security. Seems so. Alliance need a couple of calm minutes right now. Finish off these items. Slark is going to go BKB. Buys the Ogre Club. I'm not going to go for that full SNY. Yasha into BKB. I know that Nico Baby doesn't really love to buy BKB on Slark. And it's going to be like earlier BKB. He might still swap things around. Feels like he needs option, to right? take care of himself. There's no real safe hero. So with the BKB, he can actually, you know, not care about paying a leader's ulti. With Desso, Wave of Terror, Viking should try to take another fight and uh, transition that into Roche. I mean, the Halberd now, about a thousand gold away from Shad. Super, super good. Up against Alliance, and that Slark in particular. Dragonite going for Helm of the Dominator as his second item after that blink. And I group up to smoke from their I would own prefer tier one mid. Halberd. Great against Lifestealer, Pango, Monkey King. Gives you evasion. These heroes don't build into MKBs. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Before. Anyone that's trying to gank the Slark. But Viking this time, they do stick around top. Finally take that tier one. No bait and switch from them this time. I don't believe anyone's going to be TPing bottom tower either. They're sticking together as a tight unit up top. Pango, the only one elsewhere on the map. Looking to finish off his arcane boots after that spirit vessel completed. Now Phoenix is level 12. Top so 8 attacks to destroy it, which is going to be a bit harder, but all these pieces are coming together for Viking. Heaven's Halberd about to be finished. Full Spirit Vessel on Paying Alir. Monkey King and just Monkey uh, 100, yeah, 100 gold uh, from BKB. This is their timing. This is when they want to take a fight. Double damage rune Arcane Void Spirit might be the, uh, the undoing of that, though. So he's got that Aghanim's ready also. Alliance very content playing down in the bottom part of the map. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Viking not giving them any targets to play into though. They they really are very very close to each other. The buddy system in full effect and now smoking up as a full squad. Aramis the only one showing getting pinged out. Dar observer ward spotted him coming into lane and then back up again. The monkey king scouts out Phoenix. No jump, no initiation. Void spirit should be fine to get away from this one. Astral step to create a bit more of a gap, but here's the Roshan attempt from Viking potentially. It's being they pinged down, but the they pit. don't have any kind of lifesteal. There's no Vlads, so they won't be full HP. And the Lions can take a fight inside the pit with the. It, They've caught the Lynx. The Nightmare save? Is that enough? No, the chain stuns because of the lift, beautifully timed by Viking, and they'll get a freebie in FNG as well. They and now go to Rosh. Annihilated as Viking. Do they have another stun? Yeah, Venge stun is up. They've got the chain stuns. Disable the Phoenix and boom with a double kill. That's the fight they needed to open up Roshan. 
the timings were there. Like they have very synchronized item timings and that's very important in Dota. BKB on Monkey King, you have Lifestealer with the Heaven's Halberd finished. And it's a free Roshan for them. Absolutely free. Yeah, Monkey King has Deso queued up. Not sure if he realizes that Lifestealer has one already, like 10 minutes ago. Just go double Deso, why not? If only they stacked. Dyer's structures are fortified. I think if they stacked, we would see definitely a double Deso build. I restore my connection to Baby, closing in on the BKB. Alliance seemed to have lost a bit of steam, though. Now struggling to deal with the life stealer. And yeah, like S four is going auras. Helm now into Vlad's. He is invis and should scout out Toby on his way in. F and G starts with a nightmare and then yeah runs away. Quick swashbuckle forward. Focus the bane. Shad very easily takes him down. The Dragon Knight wants to stick around. They jump in with Lip. Two man starts up with the Aghanims. On that Resonant Pulse, Shad does get the Rage off now, but Nico Baby man fighting into it with a Wukong's Command and a Boundless Strike. Potential here from Monkey King to turn the fight. Shad and Boom, they stand their ground. They focus down the Venge though, and Nico Baby does get the kill as the BKB popped up and Slay Aramis and Rubik, and now Lim back in again with even more damage. They've got a Supernova very Nola. nicely placed. Should be able to stun down. No, they're not defending it. They're just leaving the supernova to pop. <laughs> they had Did nothing. Did just armor toggle down his Aegis? I, I think it's still fine for Alliance to take this kind of a fight. Hanskin dies, but they got the Aegis off. It's still, they would still have it for like three and a half minutes. And now Nico Baby can come back into a fight. Bouncing in and out, now finding Toby. Swashbuckle with the Vlad's lifesteal. He doesn't have Vlad's, never mind, I'm an idiot. Rolling Fake Thunder lands. onto Limp, Boundless Strike, Chain Stun, and another Swashbuckle. Shad's killed up FNG, but it's the Limp Void Spirit they desperately want. Spirit Vessel ticking him low, Monkey King caught by the Aether Remnant. So he will not be able to chase with that. Jump onto the treetops. What Void Spirit needs to do, and why they, I'm gonna call it, won a previous team fight, is he silenced a Pango before he could get the Rolling Thunder off, and then they can burst him down. Amazing what you found laying around. Monkey King still going for death. So I mean, he can switch and upgrade it to Mjolnir slash Maelstrom. Maybe he doesn't realize. I don't know. Professional Maybe players, they think by the way. They're going on separate targets anyway. <laughs> it's still not worth the buy. It. Still good raw damage. Double BKB. Maybe. <laughs> he switched to Basher now. So Monkey King gonna go for the Basher. You were right, Lacoste. As for farming ancients, now going for the halberd that you wanted. It does delay it quite significantly. As Nico Baby switches back to the S and Y. A monkey a smoke. <laughs> monkey switching to Aghanim Scepter. Like, attack. what do I do with this Mithril Hammer? Just the <laughs> extra 24 damage, that's it. Easy bonus damage. Whew. Enchanted Quiver for Monkey. Attack. When the Radiance item first came out, it still worked attack. on the Jingu Monkey, so Wukong's Command Monkeys. It doesn't work anymore. Oh, did it really? It did. <laughs> that's, that's nasty, man. That bonus damage. Roshan, four minutes until fast spawn. Viking all smoking past the pit. And pinging Nico Baby's Slark. They do take him down to about half HP, but Limp has managed to jump and annihilate the Vengeful Spirit. A Nightmare out of Toby stops the advance. They've got a bash, a stun, the lift onto Limp, and then he's gone. A one for one trade, but Viking favored, and Boom is still just pouncing forward and looking for additional targets. Long range Primal Spring. Jumping across the canopy. The Viking happy with what they've got. Happy that S4 is switching back to Heaven's Halberd. I, I don't even think he needed this helm. 
can't even see his creep at the moment. But probably the best one you can get is Ogre Frost Mage. Very simple tier 2 top lane alliance, not really angling to defend it. Nico Baby queuing up Scardy. Feels like he's you know, one item behind where he wants to be right now. Dragonite and Void Spirit, not really. Is under attack. Just not really you know, picking up the pieces here. There's a lot of slack attack. that Alliance are giving to this Monkey King lifestealer who just feel like much more prominent cause in this game. Nico Baby's gonna get scouted. They don't get the grab with the Rubik. Nico Baby needs to be careful, even though he has a BKB and SNY. There's still two bashers. Monkey King finished his. Lifestealer also has one long time ago. Also, Disarm, if he gets the Heaven's Halberd off on Slark before a BKB, like you just uh, disarm him for a long period of time and then he needs to reset. And Limp's Void Spirit, 30 minutes in, has completely halted in terms of farm rate, right? T less than 10k net worth now. He got the Agadims decently quickly, but it's been stalled. Has BKB queued, but his acceleration just not there. So much farm priority going to the Slark. A gift from the goddess. Shad eyeing up the Satanic now. Top part of the map, all belonging to Viking, and that's a really good sign for them as that Roshan gets closer to respawn time. Yet again, Alliance. Very tight knit group. Phoenix, the only one elsewhere, heading top to defend that wave coming in. He does have an outpost to TP2. Oh, this is a good bait. Oh, no, not really. He showed the second illusion. And Monkey King is going to come and pop this smoke. And he jumps down, kills a catapult. Can Alliance find him? He's going to Primal Spring down to the low ground to jump in from S4. DK Dragon Tail, and there it is. Monkey King jumps into the waiting arms of Alliance, and that is a huge kill now as Slark runs forward, disarmed up by the Halberd, and he gets out with a Dark Pact. Still has Shadow Dance, but he's bashed, nearly getting picked off as the Infest in. Pangolier, Swashbuckler, and the buyback. can take the Lifestealer out of danger, but Celery. Slain in the back lines by Nico Baby, while Limp dissimulating back out. Toby, great rolling thunder, and they know there's no BKB, no Shadow Dance that they can focus down. Nico Baby, that's a slot down, and the majority of Alliance's net worth and damage is gone. Down the drain, Limp chain stunned up yet again, and this Dragon Form Rubik annihilating the Void Spirit, forced to Astral step away, but they've got the gap closed from Monkey and the Swashbuckling Pangolier to take down the third hero of Alliance and leave them with no chance. And that's a perfect timing for Viking. They need to scout the Roche, there's Illusion from Vengeful Spirit scouting things out. So Monkey King with the buyback, like he can't be the one picking up the Aegis. Roche, all right, 35 seconds. Who cares Roche when they're going tier three and barracks? The buybacks are ready from Alliance and they force the Void Spirit one. Nico Baby's probably gonna have, if I get a buying, buying back on the limp here. Are they just going to buy back on Nico Baby and try and fight around this? They do, and they jump in, trying to pick off Shan, but the four staff out, the saves, the infest, no. Silence and kill as the BKB from Nico Baby allow him to stand his ground and battle into Boom's Monkey King, getting the essence shift up and a great supernova. The buybacks do pay off, expensive as they were, but defending the melee barracks and potentially giving them a chance to go into Roshan, which just respawned. That's a big throw from Viking. Monkey King bought back in the previous fight. They did not get the ages for him. Instead, they, they, they're just giving Alliance free game. Even though both Limp and Nico Baby bought back, they're gonna kill the Roche. Have that Aegis and Cheese for both of the cores, so they're gonna have two lives. Nico Baby is still hunting RMS with the help of FNG. Hard to catch. in from the right hand side. Spy the legs. legs and away he goes. Oh, but Limp, he has the gap closed. Misses the Aether Remnant, but still has that dissimulate. Everything RMS trying to do to get away comes to naught as his life is forfeit and S4 scouts out Roshan. Alpha Wolf in hand. An Alliance all going into the pit. The swing, the turnaround.
There's no way they fight this. Monkey King is just dead for way too long. And they're also the ones who are controlling the vision. Viking, they have no observer wards on the map, if I see this correctly. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Celery has one in his inventory. Finishes off Vlad's now. But Aegis and Cheese. Aegis for Slark. Cheese for the Void Spirit. And Alliance. Pretty happy with the way the game has turned. Even with those buybacks. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Viking smoked up. Of my FNG out in the open. They missed the swashbuckle, but Bane still getting picked off very quickly there. And Hunskin TP cancelled. Telekinesis lifted up into the Celery Venge. He's got no dive, so that's going to be another freebie there for Viking. And double kill for Toby. That's a very weird execution from both of these teams. A lot of mistakes. This that should not happen. Like Phoenix is gone for 50 seconds, which means that like 50 seconds less on your Aegis timer. Time wasted. And what's Limp got now? Courier coming out, full BKB. So Limp has a little more freedom in these team fights. Still very re you know, reliant on his skill set to actually do the damage. Like what, what even is the goal of the Void Spirit in terms of item build now? Do you go physical damage? Do you, you know, buy a Deso yourself? On Void Spirit? On Void Spirit, yeah. You could, yeah. You, you transition well. This hero is a combination of mixed physical and magical damage. I'm just wondering if maybe he wants like a Scythe of Vice or something so they can hex up the Lifestealer or the Monkey King, even like the Pangolier, they try already and catch have, them before they get their key spells off. They already have Shivas, that was like one of his options, armor, and he creates a lot of vision for the team, going in with one point of Astral Step, Shiva's Guard, then the Simulate, run back, just to see where they are. But Phoenix already has that, and also you don't want to like stack it. Another purple rune for him, not too bad. There it is, Arcane yet again. So Hanskin pretty much tasked with dealing with that wave coming in top. Needs to handle the catapults. A little TP to the outpost. Rejoin the squad as they do try and get themselves a tier 2 mid. With the Carties coming in. They jump the Lifestealer, starts him up. Catch him with the Remnant, but it goes swap back. Celery saves the day and the Wukong's Command coming into play. And they're going to catch S4 down to half HP, the Dragon Knight. Annihilated by Viking in a very quick team fight with the Rolling Thunder taking out FNG. They're gonna stun him up and Shad gives chase. Great Shiva's Guard and Hanskin ready with the Supernova if they want to continue fighting. Celery blown up as Nico Baby still holding on the BKB Shadow Dance with the Aegis. Complete free reign in that team fight. Three but the jump the forward from Viking continues. Disarm onto the Void Spirit, jumps into the back lines, trying to focus down the Rubik, but they are catching out the Nico Baby Slark. Doesn't get away, the Aegis expires as they do find his first life, and Limp struggling to kill off a Rubik all on his lonesome, and Nico Baby, oh, he's got nothing left in the tank. As he pounces away, does leash up the Pangolier, but boom, continues giving chase. The little bash, Dart packed it off, so the stun not coming, the Boundless Strike does land, barely as he's mid-air, but Nico Baby is out of there. Put your Ice Frogs in chat and he's such a hard hero to take down especially at this point of the game but they can get rid of the rest also s4 like he can't stand his ground because he does not have a bkb this this helm of the dominator really not paying off it's a lot of gold seemingly for not very much Shad facing off against Nico Baby, but they've got the grip on the lifesteal, and Nico Baby focusing that single target as Lip silencing three heroes in the back lines and a great supernova. Hanskin well placed, but they infest into the Rolling Thunder, bounce away, rolling out of danger. Toby saving the lifesteal with a great little play, and now considering going back in, the Blink Dragon Tail, Rubik caught by the DK, the Wukong's Command comes out, and Slark, where are you? You're finding the Vengeful Spirit, but you're not focusing the big target, that's S4. He's trapped in between three, but the Nightmare saved from FNG, finally brought down as Toby has a swashbuckle to get out of danger. Reeves up in about five seconds time, but they've got themselves a turnaround onto Limp. Hanskin getting a double kill though, and Limp still not dead. I thought the Pango would maybe get the kill, but he's brought down, and Lifestealer with Monkey King now left all on their lonesome. 
Alliance are in a 3v2, but they are afraid of what this monkey and life stealer can do. Slark and Voidbird can get in and out of the fights, but the rest of the team can't. Like, they're fully committed. You, you can't just, you know, leave Bane or Dragonite, who does not have a BKB in front lines. One of the reasons why S4 is dying so much. He still has that Vlad queued up. I would prefer to see that BKB, Spell Prism, Prince's Knife. Who do you give Prince's Knife to? You give it to Pangolier, I guess, even though he's very tanky with the Craggy Coat. Yeah, it's a good question. Well, Monkey just, King just somebody... keeping it for himself right now. <laughs> and sends it back. Himself. Silence onto the Life Stealer. Nico baby. Okay, the swap from Celery will help out. Shad wants to fight though. Look at him just ripping apart this slark. Avenge with the prince's knife. Projectile speed. Let's go. Faster the little attacks coming out. Are oh, they trying to scout out Roshan? Another two minutes until fast spawn. Minotaur horn for either side, I believe now. One for the life stealer. And on the dire side, no one's picked it up yet. Spell Prism on Void Spirit is grabbed. Amazing what you found laying around. Timeless Relic. So extra debuff duration and spell damage. Like debuff duration on Dragon Tail stun if he decides to keep it. 0 0.25, so it should be like 4.1 seconds stun. But if they have a Minotaur Horn, and yes they do, then Dragonite should get it. Let's see if DK is Invisibility. gonna be able to stick around in these team fights for a little longer. Like they're focusing, like it's a DK, and Viking just focus S4 so quickly. His dragon form lasts like five seconds in every fight. Oh, Toby in with the Rolling Thunder. Nice nightmare to buy a bit of time, but that telekinesis into magic missile clears through limp. Buyback available on the Void Spirit, but Toby just creating so much havoc. FNG is getting picked off by Boom. They're going to dive in and the supernova on the high ground. Well placed by Hanskin, but two heroes down. Buyback forced on limp. Celery will fall at long last. And Nico Baby, he's disarmed. He can't fight, but S4 battling at the Shad, who turns and lifestealers back all the HP which he had lost. And Nico Baby is now focusing to Toby's Pango. Boom, on the run away. Viking, they've been turned on. Oh, can they turn this back? Nico Baby's dodging and diving back with full HP. He's removed that Monkey King who's forced to buy back once more. And Shad, he's trapped in between four heroes. Goes for the TP. Do they have a stun? Nothing comes. Well, Limp chasing Aramis who Glimmer kicks back out of danger. This game is so back and forth, Gary. Like one minute, Viking is just winning. Then uh, two minutes after, Alliance are in control of this game. Roche may respawn in five seconds. Let's see how fast it's gonna be. They have no buybacks. Pangolier, no Rubik. No Rubik. And life's like, no, no one has buyback in this game apart from Vengeance Slark. So a tier two mid for Alliance. Roshan very fast Radiance on the respawn as Hanskin clears out that top wave yet again. It's his job just to deal with the creep waves coming in. Nico Baby has Rapier queued up. Feeling like he's lacking a little bit in the damage department. And we, we saw how well Shad can, you know, turn from half HP back up to full with Open Wounds, Satanic Feast. Aghanim Scepter on Roche. Uh, Roche going down pretty quickly. They want to smoke. Where is it? They have no smoke, but they want to contest this Roche. Scan connect. Axe yes, for DK. Does. Scan does connect. Viking are looking to contest, but S4, beautiful jump. They get the vision and they stop the Rolling Thunder. Nice super over there on the back as well. The big Wukong's command. Massive circle around the fight, but they've already lost Celery, so no swap save. And Nico Baby can just stick around. Now halberding back onto the Life Stealer with the help of S4. Toby's Rolling Thunder finally arriving in the battle, but Shad is down and boom. Yet again, trapped and he's got no way to turn. Swap back, Celery saves the day. Boom, not with buyback. So they need to get the monkey away. Another swap, keeping Toby still in play, but Nico Baby with a pounce down allows Hanskin to claim yet another life. 
That's a buyback from Life Stealer. He wants to go in. Bane couldn't get any good ultis off. They have such a nice heroes against Bane, but this fight, he got the very good grip for almost full duration. And though, even with Pango dead for a whole minute, now they're pinging it out. Roshan, three and a half thousand HP. Back into the pit we go. Does, wait, does Hans can have Agnims himself? Okay, he does. So Phoenix has full Ags done. Void Spirit already has one, of course, since like the oh, you start give it to, of the game. The uh, maybe Slark wants to pick it up, but I would prefer to give it to Dragonite. To Let's see who picks it up. It's going to be a Dragonite. The big black Void dragon. Spirit with the spell Prism. Lowering the cooldown by 20%. He even bought Eon Disc for himself. So what's the cooldown on Eon Disc? 84 seconds. The armor as well, right? Super good up against this life stealer. Never mind, no armor. I'm a moron. I was like, what armor are you talking about? Maybe Discord is interrupting because I. <laughs> no, I just I had a real small brain like, moment. Maybe there. AC. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. Did Eon Disc used to have plate mail in its in its build up? Not that I remember. Yeah, I'm just a dumbass, guys. <laughs> Maybe All I just right. don't remember, Gary. No, I, I'm pretty sure my brain is very smooth today. Smoke up from three members of Alliance, Limp, S4, FNG. Aiming for anyone who's looking to clear out this mid-wave, like a Monkey King on the trees, or a swashbuckling Pango. But Monkey's top and the rest of Viking hiding out in their bunker, waiting in their base for Alliance to come to them. I'll take that. to nothing, but it will allow FNG to potentially get some wards down. No, doesn't have any on him. And both teams seem to be lacking in, in vision. One deep ward from Alliance down south, which I think Celery is about to come and de-ward. Yeah, holding three obs and three sentries. Slark. It's hard to maintain vision against the Slark. Has Ghost Scepter. In comes Limpho. Magic damage galore and Venge down for a minute and a half. So now Viking 4 versus 5, Alliance can just group up, they know there's no buybacks. A new Eye of Scotty is so good against Monkey's Jingu, Life Slur's Feast, any kind of like lifesteal, heal is gonna be reduced by 35%. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Here comes S4. Come on, pop the dragon form, let's go. Radiant structure. I'm just going to heal up Nico, baby. Aegis and plenty of maneuverability on the Slark. Keep him on the front lines and don't fully commit. Just take down the tier 3. As for with the Galaxy Brain plays, you don't need to buy a BKB if you have a feeling that you're going to pick up a Minotaur Horn. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, hello. Arapia time. Nico, baby's having it delivered now. And Alliance just very tentatively taking down this first lane of barracks. It feels like they could maybe have committed a little harder here and, you know, got two lanes pretty quickly. Bottom barracks. But they're Radiant's playing it safely, waiting for Viking to make any kind of slip up. As Monkey King shoves out top wave, not getting involved Radiant's in any kind of base defense. And there's the rapier up on Nico Baby, Radiant's making short work of these structures. Forcing the disarm from Shad, and there's the jump in. Four staff back, and Toby forced to rolling thunder. Catches a couple, but this team fight isn't ideal from Viking. Yes, they'll be able to bring Nico Baby low, but he just dark packs, and he'll be full HP in a second. So no rolling thunder for the next fight. And now Big Daddy Dragon is gonna be taking care of the rest of the barracks. The Sarm. Man, Pango's getting so many of these lucky Radiant's shot rocks. It feels like it's 50%, boy. not 70%. Nightmare. Very long range onto Celery. Ether Lens plus the Cat Strange talent on Bane coming into play. But I think that's now two full lanes of barracks for Alliance. They can come back and defend their top melee barracks with Phoenix. And Aegis expiring in about a minute. Gary, do the math. I, I want you to look dumb. If Bane gets Timeless Relic at one point and level 25 plus Enfeeble, like, what's the grip duration gonna be? 
You want me to look dumb? <laughs> You're the maths expert, you do it. Uh, Alright, all right, let's try. That's so, your job. Duration 6 seconds on Fiend's Grip. Plus 5.5. Plus 5.5, already struggling, that's 11.5. Good job, buddy. So far, so good. Then you have, like, status resistance reduction, 30%. And then you have debuff duration extra 25. So wait, is it going to be like a 16, zero, 17 second? Just, like zero, oh hello! Extra 25, yeah, Nico, like 17 baby. seconds probably. He just turns and fights. Rolling Thunder doesn't do a damn thing, and now the silence. Multi heroes hit by Limp, and they're focusing down the monkey king. Full stop under the high ground. Can they chase him down? Of course. The Dragon Knight flaps his wings over the little cliff top there, and they're gonna. Viking from limb to limb. Toby's caught up in the Aether Remnant. They don't have any reveal, but they've got to pounce in to catch and leash him up. Toby's still going to get shredded by Slark. The Dragon Long Range Projectiles take the Pango down, and there's no buyback here for Viking. Regeneration. A Life Stealer, no buyback on cooldown for a minute and 30 seconds. He does have enough money, but I think if he can get the Courier out, this is do or die for them. Just buy that full Abyssal Blade. Many options left. Radiance top tier top three gone. Radiance top Nico, baby. Did you say many top. options left or not many options left? Not many Radiance options top. left. Oh, no okay, options like, left. Many options oh, no. left. Yeah, they can type either GG or GG. Well, WP. Played, yeah. And that's their option. <laughs> oh, that's very nice. And they've caught the life stealer. Silence of the stuns. Shab. Yes, the Satanic off. Back to full HP. Supernova gonna get focused down now, but his rage is about to end. Toby rolls back into the fountain. Infest up, but Alliance are focusing buildings. Tier fours taken down. The Aegis gone, of course, on Nico Baby, so this rapier is exposed a little bit. But S4 and Lip are able to tank the front lines there, and Nico Baby, the Satanic, gets him back up to full HP while Shab. He's looking very tanky. That man fight not going amazingly for Nico, baby. But now he's got the essence shift stacks, and now Shad is running out of gas. Toby trying to do his best to disarm and get into the battle, but Alliance five heroes strong. Take them all down, and Viking call GG. Really back and forth game. You did not know who's gonna win. A lot of mistakes by both of these teams, but uh, Alliance prevails in the end. The spell casting was like not on point. For both of these teams, you, you saw a lot of mistakes, but in the end, Alliance, like once this Void Spirit gets Aghanim Scepter, it's hard for them to take a good fight. The Spangler did not have anything to dispel the, at the early stages, at least. I, I believe he finished the Guardian Greaves in the end, but he couldn't get rid of the Silence, and he was the perfect target. But uh, also some nice saves coming out from Vengeful Spirit. Entertaining game. This is what uh, we want to see. Entertainment. That's why we're here. Yeah, it, 